Anybody leaning and depending on the Lord this morning? Come on, anybody really leaning on them? Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Come on, let's sing this song together. Clap your hands with us.
Thank you for the ability to ride here safely, Father. Thank you for um, the activities of our limbs. Father, thank you for the ability to walk in and around. Father, we're so grateful, Father. We just want to pause and just say thank you, Father. Thank you for everything that you have blessed us with, Father. Father, with that, it's just so much that we are so grateful. We're thankful for this church, Father, the ability to gather and worship your holy name, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for our wonderful pastor who has served here and his wife for 23 years. Father. He has given us his all. Thank you, Father, for his, for their work, for their commitment, Father, for their servitude, for their love, for their labor. Thank you. Father, we pray for his family, Father. We pray for his health. We pray for his finances, Father. We pray for his ability to preach and teach your word, Father. Uh, we pray for hedge of protection around he and his family for his life. Give him what he needs uh, to accomplish what you want him to do, to do Father. Father, now we want to lift this man of God up, Father, who is going to bring the word out today. Boy, rats, Father. Father. Give him the strength to preach. Give him the energy to preach, Father. Organize his mind and his thoughts, Father, so that he can give us what you have given him, Father. Father, when it's all said and done, Father, we'll be careful to give your name all the praise and honor and glory, Father. This we pray in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Chad, please give us one more selection. Amen.
What a great day to be in the house of praise and
in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now come on and put those blessings. Lose 
his reward. I want to preach just for a little while about compensation for our commitment. Compensation for our commitment. When we take the time to carefully read the gospel as it is penned by St. Matthew and specifically this 10th chapter of Matthew Levi, we will discover that this is the chapter in which Jesus calls and he empowers his disciples. We are told that he gave them power over unclean spirits. He gave them the ability to cast out demons and the ability to heal all kinds of sickness and every disease that existed among the people that they came or would come into contact with. And then we're also given the names of these 12 men that he selected in verses 2, 3, and 4. Then in verses 5 through 15, Jesus sends them out and he gives them their specific preaching, teaching, and ministry responsibilities. In verses 16 through 26, Jesus makes them aware of the fact that their ministries would not be without adversity and demonic confrontation. As a matter of fact, he tells them that he's sending them out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Jesus told them to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as a dove. And to paraphrase that, I believe that he wanted them to know it's hard out here for a prophet. But here in our text, in verses 40 through 42, Jesus gives them some specific information concerning the compensation package for those who faithfully do his work. And then also for those who faithfully support those who are doing the work of the Lord. And so, my brothers and sisters, I need y'all to lean in real close. Listen, put that coffee cup down right now. Tell your children, stop fumbling with those games. Lean in real close while you're logged on. I need to take a moment and emphasize this fact clearly because there are times when people erroneously think that those who preach the gospel are the only ones that the Lord has promised to bless. But according to this text, Jesus promises his favor on those who do the preaching and on those who support those of us who do the preaching. Look at it. Notice the words of Jesus in verse number 42. I need you to listen to me carefully when I say that I support of the preacher, the prophet, the man of God does not have to be something great and grand. Jesus says if we will give them something as simple as a cool cup of water and if we do it in the name of a disciple we shall by no means lose our reward. So allow me to say that all of us expect to get paid and we expect to be compensated when we've done our work at our places of employment. I mean, especially when we work hard, Reverend Davis, and especially when we know that we've done our very best. Now 
listen to me. I, I hope that this will not offend anybody. So let me try to say this as tactfully as I possibly can. Now, but when it comes to people uh, who work full time in ministry, there are some people, not all, but some people uh, who don't want to be a blessing to them financially and they don't want the Lord or anybody else to bless them. But this text helps us to realize that God promises a compensation package both for those who preach the gospel and for those who support the ones who carry the gospel. Come on, talk back to me. So I need to know what if you were placed in a position where the Lord would reward you solely on your commitment, your consistency, and your Christian character. What do you think the amount of your compensation would be from the Lord? You see, well, we, we should shout and rejoice about the fact that it's true that God uh, does not always uh, bless us uh, according uh, to our faithfulness toward him. Uh, but he blesses us uh, according to his grace toward us. Let me try it one more time. Uh, for the folk can see it here uh, while the folk can play no catch up. God does not always uh, bless us uh, according uh, to our faithfulness to him. Uh, but many times uh, he blesses us uh, according uh, to his grace toward us. Can I preach it like you can understand it? Uh, we didn't deserve uh, to wake up this morning. Uh, it was his grace that did it. Uh, we didn't deserve uh, to go to the closet uh, and be able to push back clothes uh, and decide what we wanted to wear. It was grace uh, that hung those garments up there. We didn't deserve uh, to be able to make it across town uh, without having an automobile accident, uh, but his grace uh, has kept us uh, every step of the way. Uh, so come on, Addison, if you got a shout, put it right there. Uh, come on, uh, McKinney, if you know God's grace uh, has kept you, uh, then give God glory. Receive. 
Let me see if I can preach it so you can understand it. Because I left a note if they are not shouting right here. Then preach it in greater detail. I think I'll do that. Jesus says, when you recognize that I'm the master, that's when you will receive the one who comes to you in my name. I remember growing up in Houston, Texas. I was about 12 years old. My older sister, Jerry, was about 16 years old. I was down at Kirk Bostick's house shooting marbles. Now, those of you under the age of 55, you don't know nothing about shooting marbles, so you take a break right now while the old school crowd follows me in this point. I was shooting marbles. Jerry came down to Kirk Bostick's house and she stood in the middle of the marble ring and this is what she said. Roy Elton, Mama said, come home. It's time for dinner. I said, Jerry, get out of the way. We're not finished up playing marbles. So I kept on playing marbles. Dinner time passed. I went home and my mother said, didn't I send word for you to come home? I said, yes. Jerry came. She said, what did Jerry say? I said, Mother Jerry said, for mother said for you to come home. It's dinner time. She said, now before I whip you, let me tell you why I'm going to whip you. What you fail to realize is that Jerry didn't come in her own name. She came in my name. So when you didn't respond, you were not rejecting Jerry. You were rejecting me. Come here, I ain't scared of none of y'all. I'm trying to help you to understand that Dr. Billy Bell ain't here in his own name. Talk back to me. When he preaches the word of God, he's telling you what God said the Lord. Can I preach it like I'm feeling it? That's the reason why when he comes to preach, he always brings his Bible. He doesn't bring a library book. Not only, not only do 
I see the holy, holy connection. But, but look at verse number 41. That, that's where I see what I want to call the heavenly compensation. Now, notice most of us just focus only on the fact that the text says, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. But the text goes on to say, he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Now, now to receive a prophet in the name of a prophet and a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, it has a broad and a controversial interpretation. Uh, this, this is how Adam Clark explains it in his commentary. He said, even if the teacher or the preacher should grow weak, and if he's later found to be worthless, but yet the person who has received him in the name of Jesus, under the sacred character of an evangelist, he, he won't lose his reward because he did it for the sake of Jesus and for his love for the church. In, in other words, if you've been shot and you need to get to the hospital and I just robbed a bank and I see you beside the road and I stop in the midst of my robbery, put you in my car, take you to the hospital, I'll be punished for my crime, but you'll still get your reward. I, I, I'm trying to help somebody to understand that, that you all not ever allow the devil to blind you if the man of God should happen to stumble and fall. You need to focus more on the truth than you focus on the truth teller. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that this, this does not excuse our sin. This does not excuse our weakness. Those of us who preach and teach the word of God. But what it simply means is that our rewards from God have not been deleted. That's one of the reasons I was sharing with our, my, our men's ministry on yesterday. That's one of the reasons my preaching is so forceful uh, and right in your face. Because what you fail to realize is that God's word is like a two-edged sword, but it doesn't have any hammers. So if you're going to do anything with the word of God, you got to hold it on the blade. Uh, and here is what I want you to understand. Uh, why I'm preaching, uh, I'm constantly being cut uh, because I'm holding the word. Uh, and so I made up my mind. Uh, if I got to bleed, everybody got to bleed. Uh, so I'm not going to stand up here and I'm the only somebody that's going to bleed. Uh, I'm going to cut in your business. Uh, but is there anybody here on the right side while the left side catch up who knows uh, that the word of God will not only cut you but it will also heal you? Am I preaching to anybody who knows that the word of God uh, will not only wound but it will also bless you. Anybody here know that the word of God will not only give you some seasons of difficulty because of your sinfulness, but it will also provide deliverance when you apply the principles to you. And so, I come to tell us that the word we preach did not come from us. And the rewards you receive don't come from us. They all come from our God. Now let me tell you what the problem is. Look at the text. The Bible says, he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Now, most people have so diluted righteousness that they don't think there is much value in a righteous man's reward because they really don't practice a whole lot of principles of righteousness. But what we gotta realize is that the righteous man's reward 
that Jesus is referring to is not your righteousness, but his righteousness. Preach, Pastor, righteous. Glory to God, I'm doing the best I can. So how do we establish and fortify this position of embracing the heavenly compensation? I come to tell you that we need to spend more time with our leaders. I thank God we got a pastor who takes the time to text us up on a daily basis. He checks on us. He makes sure that all things are well and soon as the conversation is about to come to an end, he never hangs up the phone without asking that holy divine question. Just let me know what you need and whatever you need. If I don't have it, I'll be sure to try to get it from you. You got to spend time with your leader. Then you got to embrace the teachings from your leader. I come to tell somebody that if we are blessed by the preaching and the teaching, then after the time and after the teaching, we ought to joyfully invest our treasure. I just believe that if you can pay TCU for that teaching, talk back to me, SMU for that teaching, if you can pay Harvard for that teaching, if you can pay Princeton for that teaching, come on, talk to me, if you can pay Southern University for that teaching, if you can pay Texas Southern University for that teaching, if you can pay the University of Miami for that teaching, we are not here. And say, child of God, he's held us much too long. He's held us, he's held us much too long. I got to go. But 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 when we examine this text, we'll discover we've looked at the holy connection. Just look at somebody across the aisle and under your mask. Just say to them, God brought us together. We, we looked at the heavenly compensation. Y'all tell somebody, I don't mind PFC, let's go. I, I don't mind investing in the, what the Lord has deposited in my life through the man of God. And uh, finally, uh, let's look at the love, uh, verse number 42. Am I in the right room this morning? Yes, sir. The Bible says, whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple. Jesus said, assuredly, I say to he shall by no means lose his reward. And that's when I want to leave you. Somebody shout the holy connection. Somebody shout the heavenly compensation. But let me close with a word about the humble consideration. And I need to tell somebody in this room and somebody watching online that is not always the big things that get the Lord's attention. Yeah. Jesus does not promise to give a reward to those who buy the prophet a house. He does not promise a reward to those who buy the prophet a Lord a car. Talk back to me. He does not promise a reward to those who buy the prophet a suit of clothes. But he said, if you just give him a cup of cold water, and notice if he will, he does not simply say a cup of water, but he said a cup of cold water. In other words, you need to know since God provided you with a cup, you ought to be willing to give him some 
some water. Let me try one more time. Since God has given you a cup, then you ought to be willing to give him some water. Y'all missing your shout. What you fail to realize is that whenever you bless the man of God, he gets the water, but you get to keep the cup. Since God put water in it for him to get a cup of water, don't you know every time you go to the faucet, the Lord will have all the water you need. Story in. He did die. He was buried, but that's not how the story in. 
the West Campus of 2000. Amen. The last thing we do is, 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 is we'll give a benediction and then we'll be. 